Welcome to this tutorial about using the protected browser storage in Blazor Server. This package is only available in Blazor Server because if you run our C# -sharp code in the client, which is the case if you use Blazor WebAssembly, then the users could see the encryption mechanism and the whole protection thing would make that much sense. So first I have to download the package. Therefore I go to the NuGet package manager Here I typed it out already. Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components Protected Browser Storage. For this to work, you have to use uh, .NET 5 pre-release pre and or release candidate version and therefore have to use Visual Studio 2019 preview. So this package is hiding JavaScript interrupt calls for us. And whenever we want to use JavaScript interrupt calls. We have to do it is in the lifecycle method on after render async. So I'm going to create a new component. I call it state component. This component will pass itself to its children. We can achieve this by enclosing the children content of the component in this cascading value. And here we are passing this, which means the component itself. The child content, we are expecting this to over a parameter of type render fragment. And here we're just rendering the child content. So we want to store the current count of the, of the counter. Therefore, I'm creating a field. Now, I'm all writing the on after render async method in here. As I said, we can call JavaScript methods. And we also are getting passed here the first render parameter. Here we can make a check if it's the first time that the application is getting rendered. We are going to retrieve the value from the local storage. And therefore, I'm going to create a new method. This method will work asynchronously, run asynchronously, call it get count. I'm going to import the namespace, otherwise it's too long. That's a very interesting method here, storage get async, because yeah, of course I also have to inject an object of type protected local storage. I could also go with session storage, but I'm choosing local storage here. And for this to be available over the inversion of control container, I have to add it first to the iService collection by calling add protected uh, browser storage on the on the iService collection. So now I can await storage, get async, here pass the name of the key, in this case, case count. So I've told you this method is very special because it is not returning a task of int, but a value task of int. And if uh, the, the, the code is running synchronously, we don't uh, allocate a new object on the heap by using a uh, value task return type. So, and here we are just checking if the result has succeeded, then we are returning its value. Otherwise we are returning zero. As I've told you, we do this here so that it's only a uh, run when we are first rendering the component because whenever we call a status change, this method will be called, but it won't be the first render so we don't have to retrieve the value again. Now I also have to provide a method to increment the value, call it increment. Here we are setting the item asynchrony, asynchronously, of course, the key int, and then we just increment the count before we set it. And we are calling status changed again. Now, we have to enclose the whole app in this component. 
and the thing that I'm going to copy and paste in here, which will be the, the child component that, that we expect over the as a parameter. Now I'm going into the count eraser component. Here I am binding. No, I'm not first. I have to. expect the state component as a cascading parameter and that's possible because we have enclosed everything in the cascading value now here i can just bind to the count i'm going to change this method a bit so that it is uh, running asynchronously and we are awaiting the implementation now here i'm going to change the lambda 2 so that it's running asynchronously as well. That's already it. Let's have a look. Let's navigate to the counter, restart with zero. Now, if I make a refresh, we have six again. In a normal Blazor application, we would restart by zero. Now, I'm quickly showing you how it's working. So we here go to the local storage. Now, if I increment it, we see the value is getting changed. And because this value comes from the server, the user has no clue.